On the happiest day of my life, I started to cry, which was January 12, 2005. And my children said, Mommy, why are you crying? Because I said, I feel something is very, very wrong. I said, um, I really can't put my finger on it, but I know something is very wrong. A home meant somewhere where I could come and be at peace at the end of the day, somewhere that I could look at and see, you know, what I've worked for. It's a place for my kids to grow up, to have rooms, for their cousins to come over. You know, um, I love children, so it's really for them. It's not for me. You know, I tell them that this is their home. I just pay the bills. I've been through a lot in my life. Um, I grew up as an orphan. You know, I, I want to protect them and give them so many things that I didn't have. You know, I want to make them as whole as possible. A subprime loan is a loan that's given to a homeowner or a home buyer that may not qualify, that does not have uh, good enough credit or good enough income to be able to qualify for a regular mortgage, a prime mortgage. You know, it used to be that, um, say 15 years ago, it was a thing known as redlining. So this is where a financial institution basically drew a line around certain neighborhoods and says, we're not lending in this community. And that was, that was a practice. And congressional acts and all sorts of laws were passed outlawing redlining. And then basically prime and subprime were created. So it was like basically a replacement. It said that, well, okay, we're going to lend to these folks, but we're going to stereotype them, and then we're going to feed them a particular type of product. I called Home Center Realty, and they're located in Floral Park, and I met with a man that he told me his name was Mark Amir, but his name through court and everything I found out is Amir Amar. So then I said to him, who's going to approve me for a mortgage? He says, don't worry, I'm going to fix my magic, I'm going to work for you. He says, I work for you, I'm going to fix everything up. He says, you watch in one year. He says, everybody will give you credit. So one of our members, uh, Martha Espinoza, is one of many people who have gotten caught in what's known as a one-stop shop. Um, and so she um, was solicited by this real estate company. Um, the real estate company both owns the home, arranges to get you a mortgage, provides you with an attorney to represent you, um, does the appraisal, does all the, they take care, it's one-stop shop, and they take care of everything. And it's a complete conflict of interest. Um, you don't, when, normally when you're buying a house, you don't want any of those people to know each other. Um, they might have heard of each other, but you don't want them to actually know each other because um, then your interest cannot be preserved. People see you a single female, they, they, they just throw you any astronomical price. I was living here six months when the lady next door, the same realtors that bought her house, and her name was Mrs. Duncan, they bought her house for 189000 How was I already here and my house, they sold it to me for three ten. You know, it was just a big scam that they were doing in the neighborhood and taking people for, their, for a ride. Whoever appraised it, appraised it for whatever. It, it kind of makes you feel like you're paranoid. You look at people, you don't know who to trust. And it's, it's, it's a shame behind going through an ordeal like this to live life like that. My first apartment, I have a son. He was about five at the time. And um, it was, we, we didn't have windows, it was completely beat up, and none of that mattered to me, and it was, it was something to build upon. When you see my um, ancestors here, of, of, of a man and a woman in chains, this was given to me by my grandmother, it was my father's who has passed away, so when I look at them, I think of his spirit being around. 
I've lived in Park Slope over 30 years. You know, I didn't buy because I had, you know, a rich uncle I bought as I could. In um, 1995, I bought two units at once. It's eight unit um, building. So over a five year period of time, I bought out each unit as it became available. And that's how I became, I bought out this whole building from inside out. It used to be where you took out a mortgage from a bank and have 15 year mortgage, 20 year, 30 year mortgage. You were paying every month that money to that bank um, and the mortgage stayed with that bank. Um, in the last 10 or 15 years, mortgages through the secondary mortgage market uh, were being sold from one financial institution to another. My first lender, it was a five-year arm. If anybody knows, that's five years at the same interest, and then you get another five-year. From my contract, included an extension of another five-year. Instead of giving me the other five years, they assigned it. And a lot of people will find their mortgages assigned over to another institution. They're telling me, the Banking Commission is telling me that um, anybody with money can buy out your mortgage, your mortgage, your mortgage, as long as they have money. They don't even have to be a bank. So, because that was my question, can these people just do that? And they say, sure, that have, they have no regulation to that. Regulation in this industry, in the, in the real estate industry, and I'm, when I speak of the real estate industry, I'm including everybody, you know, the, the, the mortgage part of it, the loan part of it, the real estate broker part of it, even the, the law part of it, uh, it's not as regulated as some other industries are. It's basically what they're trying to get at is how setting minimum requirements on how you could enter the industry and setting very low requirements on how you're supposed to be conducting the business. What happened in my case is that my lenders also vied for my um, underlying mortgage. I owed them 385000 my private lenders swooped up the underlying mortgage and then when the year came up, I don't owe them 170, I owe them 600,000 and we want it all right now. We're finding out the sort of now when, when the people are in foreclosure and we're going back to the banks and saying, hey, you know, we need to either readjust this loan, we need to sell this property, we need to do a short sale or something, how do we do it? And a lot of times what the banks are telling us is that well, it's not our final decision. And we're you know, a little bit shocked. said, what do you mean it's not your final decision? The loan is from, you know, from, this, from your bank. They said, no, we're only servicing the bank. Well, we're servicing the loan. Our real, the owner of this real note is an investor sitting in Germany or is an investor sitting in Nebraska. It's a you know, municipal union, municipal workers union in Nebraska. CNN today, 739,000 homes have received a foreclosure notice um, in the last three months. Three and a half million people across the country, um, all of a sudden, what, they'd lost their jobs or they had a financial hardship. I mean, it was general practice all across the country that the banks were giving money to people because they make money every time they give the mortgage. The first time how I got into foreclosure was because I was taking my money that I was supposed to be paying my mortgage with to fix the disasters that were happening in my home. That's as best as I can put it. When I first came here, it was a very beautiful house. The basement had carpet, everything was well put together, they had the bedrooms, it was painted, it was sheetrocked. But through all the water damages and the water coming in, the she rock, you know, eventually crumbles. It was a cosmetically fixed home. It was like they just put band-aids over everything. It was one disaster, one catastrophe after another. And this is the main beam that supports your whole house. From here to here, it was cut. So either the house can fold in this way or the house can fold out this way. Well, the day I received my foreclosure letter is, of course, not at all like when I moved in and I was so excited. Every part of the process is, 
it's nerve wracking. <laughs> so you never get over it, even if you are prepared, you know, even if that you're stealing yourself for this battle. My son rode up here. I'm, you know, I'm here to win, you know, after many, 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 many denials and, you know, just denied, denied. I'm here to win. And so those, those things help me um, work it out. It's not good enough to just have all the litigation stuff in front of you if you don't have some type of inspiration. But I have a whole bunch of legal stuff underneath this <laughs> couch. And, you know, there's days that, you know, it's all over the place because I'm working. And then there's days where I can, I can put it away and just be at peace with the day. It's a beautiful home and it has great potential. And if I had never gotten into all this mess, I probably would have made a beautiful home out of it. Three years later, it's still the same way. So, we don't even bother. At times I start doing something and I just become very disgusted, very overwhelmed, angry. Sometimes, you know, I guess that's when I really feel it the most. When, when I say, okay, well, have a better attitude, you know, what can you do? But then when everything is so astronomical and out of my reach, I feel helpless. I mean, specifically the top five investment banks, um, Deutsche Bank, um, Bear Stearns, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, Lehman Brothers, um, recorded $36 billion in profits last year. Uh, and that's just the top five investment banks. So these people made a lot of money on this whole subprime f fiasco. Quite honest, I woke today and said, fate's already sealed. All I have to do is show up. My cousin told me that. Just show up. Don't, don't lose fate in it at this point. <laughs> oh, and that's why a lot of people lose their homes one time. Default, just not showing up. To their court cases. To their court cases. Not answering. Default, yeah, too afraid. Big, this big command comes in the air. You have been foreclosed. Just show, just put in your answer. You have 20 days to put in the answer, then show up. Get our victory today. Yes. The judge saw in our favor. The guy, the judge, constantly was like watching her, Maybe watching us. You know, Changes has a, the idea of what's called court support, and even one person, just one person, looking on and just being there, giving you support, is wonderful. And we want to share that idea because it's not like this group can come to every court case, but everybody who has a court case can bring somebody with them, family members, somebody, to, so that the judge can see, one, you're not alone, and two, we can see you, we hear you, you're being held accountable now. When I saw something was incorrect according to the law, because I know the law, I was like this, you know what, if she wasn't properly served, then according to the law, foreclosure law, the house should be on stay and cannot be sold for a year. I believe that he went according to the law and made a decision according to the law. Had the support group not been there, I don't believe that would have happened today. Going forward is, you know, the fight for the community to show that it can be done. And, and if I can do it, we all can do it. <laughs> so I feel really great.
Put in the cart. We're here for an auction. Your Honor, I must take this gavel from you. Um, this auction is hereby canceled. We have a foreclosure and judgment against the Brooklyn Supreme Court. Um, and we're actually going to be auctioning off the Brooklyn Supreme Court. We can start the bid off at one dollar. Anyone? One dollar. Michael, ten dollars. Michael, ten dollars. Okay. Herbert Dodge, we have twelve dollars. Look, that's the Supreme Court over there. Yes, sir. Twelve dollars. Um, do I have any advance on twelve dollars? Every effort um, in turn on the federal level um, has been to create has been to help out the financial institutions, um, the mortgage lenders, the investment banks. Um, the legislation that Congress is probably going to pass um, by the end of this week or, or next week um, is going to do very little to help people like Martha, uh, people like Millie um, and Hector, um, the families that we work with. So they had this housing fair at um, Andrew Jackson High School, and I went there. I met this guy, Lionel, and his partner there. I started talking, and I said to them, they must be out of their mind because I'm not going to foreclosure. I am not losing my home. I will sleep on City Hall steps. I will be like the next Al Sharpton, probably the biggest mouth and the pain in the neck, and people will be complaining about me, but I'm not giving up this fight that easy. All of the houses that we see here, we pull them down in East New York. It kind of represent what this, this housing crisis uh, uh, how it's affecting our community. So we thought that maybe it would be a good idea to build these houses out of the signs that claim to help people. You're not alone. Now that pick us off one at a time. But collectively, we can bring them down. We do more flyers to pass by to encourage this community to help us. And so that we could keep the American dream to keep our homes. People like me are here to expose what we call master cheaters. All of the banks are master cheaters. I'm also a victim of foreclosure. Um, I've been a victim of enterprise conspiracy. And what we're going through is really enterprise conspiracy. What is enterprise conspiracy? When you have several people conspire against you. and just notice that you can do it too, but you have to do something. Um, the homes here represent about half of the families that lost their homes this week in Brooklyn. So this is just for half of them, but we're sending our love out to all of them, to all of us, um, and all those who are gonna be in this situation soon. I never came to this country for America dream. I came to collaborate my energies with my brothers and sisters from around the world. I had my property in Guyana. I didn't come back here homeless and penniless. This country made me homeless and penniless and removed my dignity. I've been a teacher for 40 years. Where is my damn dignity? Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, B. 
I'm trying just to keep my home. Ain't gonna let this system turn me round, no, turn me round, no, turn me round. Ain't gonna let this system turn me round because I'm trying just to keep my home. Which side are you on? Oh, which side are you on? Which side are you on? Oh, which side are you on? Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round, turn me round, turn me round. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. Because I'm trying, Lord knows I'm trying, just to keep.